Today's video has been brought to you by Squarespace. In 1986, the Italian car manufacturer Alfa Romeo introduced an engine called the Twin Spark engine. Instead of having one spark plug in each cylinder, they installed two. This dramatically improved the quality of the combustion, leading to improved performance, efficiency, and reduced emissions. In fact, to this day, twin spark engines are the absolute pinnacle of engine design, often imitated but never duplicated. Yeah, what I just told you is a lie. So, well, most of it is a lie, but some of it is true. Do you know which part is true and which is not? Well, I'll let you think about it one for a few moments as I tell you about Squarespace. As you already know from my previous video, Squarespace is a one-stop shop for everything from your custom domain name to your website design to online product sales to product promotions, uh, tools for finding new customers, basically everything. Now, today I want to talk a bit about online, the online sales aspect of Squarespace. Now, some time ago, I used to own a CNC machine that I bought myself or went to operate myself and I made custom car parts on it that I sold worldwide. Obviously, to sell stuff around the world, I needed an online store. And back then I decided to make it myself using WordPress on a self-hosted website. And although in the end I managed to successfully set this up, let me tell you, my website was never straightforward nor cost effective. Had I known about Squarespace back then, honestly, things would have been so much easier and I would have gotten to keep more of my revenue and would have more time to actually devote to product design and promotion, uh, adding new products, editing them, removing them, adding payment and shipping options. It's it's just a few clicks with Squarespace. There's no trial and error and you never have to fear your site crashing or looking ugly because you can't do web design. Uh, and also when it comes to promotion, you do not have to use separate services or your own email or whatever. It's all integrated into one single platform and it's super intuitive and it's all just a click away. I have so many friends who are makers, custom car parts, 3D printing, cool stickers and badges, you name it. People make so much cool stuff nowadays. And I often ask them, well, why don't you sell this around the world online? People want to buy this. And the answer is very often, you know, it's complicated and expensive to set up an online store. I don't have time for this, yada, yada, yada. Well, honestly, with Squarespace, that's a really poor excuse because once you do decide to take the next step, the platform is going to do so much work for you in a visually very pleasing way, in a very short amount of time, and it's all going to be intuitive along the way. So if you're ready to evolve, past the hours of chasing DMs on Instagram, then you can head over to Squarespace and try it out for free, see if you like it, if it suits you, what it can do for you. And then if you decide to take the next step, head over to squarespace.com slash D4A and get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And now back to engines with more than one spark plug per cylinder. So in 1986, Alfa Romeo first engine, to this day the pinnacle of engine design. Is it true? Uh, no, 1986, definitely not. The first ever twin spark, functional twin spark engine was developed on this car. Is it an Alfa Romeo? Well, technically, yes, it's an Alfa Romeo, but at this time, it was still just an Alfa. And you're looking at the Alfa 40 over 60 GP or Grand Prix car. This car was the creation of Giuseppe Merosi, who not only had an incredible mustache, but also developed a car and an engine that was light years ahead of its time. Four and a half liters of displacement, double overhead cams, four valves per cylinder, a 90 degree valve angle and twin spark plugs in 1914. And although the basic engine architecture was inspired by Peugeot engines from 1912 and 1913, whose design is claimed by Swiss engineer Ernest Henri, uh, the twin spark thing was definitely an alpha original creation. So why two spark plugs instead of one? As we know, a single spark plug is perfectly capable of igniting the air fuel mixture and you obviously can't ignite the same mixture twice. No, you can't. But what you can do is ignite the same mixture once at two different spots by firing two spark plugs at the same time. And this can definitely be beneficial. Let's imagine an engine with two valves per cylinder. In such an engine, a spark plug cannot be centrally located because the space is occupied by valves. So we are forced to locate the spark plug somewhere on the side of the chamber. When the spark plug fires, it ignites the air fuel mixture and the combustion flame front travels outward from the spark plug until it covers the entirety of the combustion chamber. Obviously, this takes some time. And the amount of time required to complete the combustion depends on the flame speed of the combustion. And the flame speed depends on the type of fuel, the octane rating, the compression ratio of the engine, how well the air and fuel are mixed together, and what is the ratio of air to fuel and possibly even some other factors. But in general, as RPMs increase, the speed of the piston is going to outrun the speed of the combustion. This means that we must rely on something called ignition advance. And that means firing the spark plug a bit earlier before 
before the piston reaches top dead center to give combustion a bit of a head start to start spreading and building combustion pressure so that it can build maximum combustion pressure by the time that the piston reaches just a bit past top dead center so that maximum combustion pressure is exerted on the piston at the correct time as it's going down and this is then going to result in maximum power and efficiency. But there's a limit to ignition advance. Fire the spark plug too early and you start creating combustion as the piston is still moving upwards. This is essentially pre-ignition and it can damage the engine because it forces the piston to work against the combustion which exposes it to massive amounts of heat and mechanical stress. So if we run out of ignition advance and we still want to rev the engine to high RPM, then our only other choice is to increase the speed of the combustion. And we can do this by initiating combustion at two points instead of one. Now on two valve engines where the spark plug is not centrally located, the flame front travels a pretty lengthy path to cover the entire combustion chamber. But if we install two spark plugs, as you can see, the travel distance of the flame front becomes much shorter. So by installing two spark plugs, we're not increasing the flame speed. Instead, we're reducing the travel distance of the flame front, which obviously decreases combustion time, making it possible to fully cover the combustion chamber even at high RPM and high piston speeds. Another benefit of twin spark plugs is that the engine can now tolerate a leaner air fuel mixtures. A leaner mixture has less fuel, which obviously improves fuel economy. But due to the low fuel content, a lean air fuel mixture can be difficult to ignite. But twin spark plugs make this less of an issue by increasing the number of ignition points, which ensures that at least one spark plug is at a location that is ignitable. Now the modern Alfa Romeo twin spark engine was introduced in 1986 and it was a two valve engine with hemispherical combustion chambers and two spark plugs equally spaced out from the center of the chamber. The sparks were fired at the same time and these engines did indeed demonstrate improved power and efficiency compared to their single spark predecessors. Now later Alfa Romeo twin spark engines were 16 valve, so 4 valves per cylinder. And as you can see the 4 valves force a different twin spark arrangement. We can no longer have 2 equally sized spark plugs equally spaced out from the center of the chamber because this area is now occupied by the valves. Instead we have a single 14mm main spark plug at the center of the chamber and a secondary smaller 10mm spark plug at the outer edge of the chamber. And as you can see, due to the central location of the main plug, this setup doesn't really do anything to reduce combustion times. Instead, it reduces emissions. Now, in the first two generations of the Alfa Romeo Twin Spark 16 valve engines, the CF1 and CF2 engines, the main plug fires first and then the secondary plug fires after it just a few milliseconds later. The idea behind this is that the smaller plug can ignite any unburned fuel at the outer edges of combustion. Now burning the air fuel mixture more thoroughly obviously reduces harmful emissions but it also reduces the chances of knock by eliminating unburned fuel which could otherwise spontaneously self-ignite leading to knock and potential engine damage. So if twin spark plugs offer the benefits of improved efficiency, reduced emissions and better performance, one would expect them to be on pretty much every engine on every car on the road today. In reality the opposite is true and as many of you probably know, twin spark plugs are a pretty rare occurrence on car engines. Um, Nissan had them in 1978 on their NAPS X and NAPS Z cars, Ford also had them on their uh, four cylinder Mustangs and Rangers in the late 80s and early 90s, um, Honda had something called IDSI which is intelligent dual sequential ignition which was present on their smaller cars in the early 2000s but other than these examples and Alfa Romeo that's pretty much it. In fact starting from around 2010 uh, twin spark plugs are pretty much extinct on all car engines but the question is why? Again let's look to Alfa Romeo for the answer the manufacturer that stuck with twin spark technology the longest. The final generation of the twin spark engines were known as CP3 and just like their predecessors these were 16 valve engines with one large and one small spark plug. But unlike their predecessors which first fired the main and then the secondary plug the CP3 engines fired both plugs at the same time. With one plug located at the center it's pretty obvious that there's no benefits to reducing combustion times here because the central plug still has to cover the entire half of the combustion chamber where there isn't a spark plug. Also emission benefits are questionable because the two plugs fire at the same time so there really isn't much of an effect of burning the unburned fuel at the edges of the combustion chamber. The reality is that benefits of such a system were likely marginal and twin sparks remained on these engines because it was simply something that Alfa Romeo had a huge stock of and didn't want to create additional expenses, you know, by designing and casting new heads. 
So why did Alfa Romeo give up the benefits of twin sparks on the CP3 engines? Well, the answer is that these engines already had something on them that offered the same benefits and more. And that was variable length intake manifolds and variable valve timing. By having two paths of different length for the intake air and varying the intake valve opening time in relation to RPM, you ensure optimal air mass and speed at all RPM. This then improves air fuel mixture homogenization, which leads to better performance, efficiency and emissions. In fact, improving air fuel mixture homogenization has been the name of the game for gasoline engines pretty much since day one. The better mixed or the more homogeneous the air fuel mixture is, the better and the faster it burns. The faster it burns, the higher the RPM you can sustain. And the better it burns, the more emissions friendly, efficient and powerful the engine is. The first big step in improving air fuel mixture homogenization came when carburation was replaced by fuel injection. The next big step was the introduction of variable valve timing and lift and variable length intake manifolds. The final nail in the coffin of twin spark systems was the introduction of direct injection or even dual injection in more recent engines. By having an injector which operates at a much higher uh, fuel pressure than port injection and sprays fuel directly into the combustion chamber, you dramatically improve fuel atomization, which leads to even better air fuel mixture homogenization at high RPM. In the end, it was these major leaps in technology which resulted in twin spark systems becoming unnecessary and looking like little more than a band aid for inferior air fuel homogenization. But in addition to this, they were also abandoned because combustion chamber space is some of the most premium real estate in an engine. It's extremely scarce and valuable and incorporating another spark plug can limit valve diameters, which obviously limits performance potential. And also having twin spark plugs increases production and servicing costs and that's never a good thing. So twin spark plugs are obsolete and we don't need them. Well, not really. Sure, they might be unnecessary on modern car engines, but they can be a valuable addition to motorcycles. They saw usage on various motorcycles over the years and they're better suited to motorcycles because bikes rev higher than cars and don't have the space to implement variable length intake manifolds and variable valve timing and lift. But by far the most widespread and important usage of dual ignition is in airplane engines and the reason isn't power or efficiency, it's safety. An ignition coil is a component that can fail at any time resulting in a spark plug not firing and that cylinder being constantly washed down with fresh unburned fuel. This can then lead to hydro locking which is a seized failed engine. In a car this means being towed. In an airplane the consequences are obviously far more dangerous and potentially catastrophic. Having dual ignition on airplane engines means that even in the event of a coil failure you have another ignition coil and another spark plug to keep firing that cylinder and have the engine continue to operate normally. Also airplane engines once the airplane takes off are usually operated at a steady speed. They don't constantly vary their RPM like motorcycle or car engines which means that variable valve timing isn't really that useful on airplane engines making twin sparks more beneficial on these engines. And there you have it, twin spark plugs and why some engines have them and others don't. As always, thanks a lot for watching and I'll be seeing you soon with more fun and useful stuff on the D4A channel.